Dalai Lama's monastery, Namgyal, and holds the degree of Geshe Larampa, considered one of the greatest living scholars in Sutra and Tantra in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition and recognized by all the greatest scholars, including His Holiness, which I've heard him praise in Dharamsala when I was there, uh, Rinpoche, uh, as one of the greatest scholars uh, alive. So we're so fortunate to have this teaching today before we get started. Uh, with Nagarjuna's Precious Garland, where it stands a 380, right around there. That's where we're going to get started today. Um, and I don't know where my glasses are, if that's okay. But before we get started, let's have um, the introductory prayers. We'll have the uh, prayer of refuge. Thank you so much. The prayer of refuge and bodhicitta um, and the outer mandala offering. Uh, so we'll do outer mandala offering first in English as well as Tibetan. Um, and then the prayer of refuge uh, and bodhicitta. The fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure realm. Holy Lamas high, wrap the sky of your Dharma bodies in massive clouds of knowledge and love and let them pour upon the earth of your disciples as we are ready, a shower of rain, the teachings deep and wide. Send forth this jeweled mandala to you, precious Guru. Here, Dham Guru Ratna Mandala Gandhir Atvaita. Nagi Chinese, 
So today we are studying Nagarjuna's precious garland. And before that, for over 10 years, Rinpoche uh, bestowed upon us the most wonderful teaching on Lama Tsongkhapa's great treatise on the stage of the path to enlightenment. He went over the details of that text in a lengthy fashion and the amount of time that was spent on it, I don't believe uh, has, that has ever, we don't have documentation of that amount of time spent on the Lam Rim Chemo. Uh, since Lama Tsongkhapa wrote it. Uh, so we are so fortunate and it's so wonderful to know uh, there are some nuns in Canada, I believe, who are making books into Tibetan and editing them. And the very rough, basic, you know, first steps of it are happening right now. Um, and I don't know how many volumes it will end up, but it may end up in Tibetan before it ends up in English, which is a very interesting uh, idea and it's because of the content and there's even more content than I was able to translate so there's even more to learn than we in English have learned already because Rinpoche was teaching at a Geshe Larampa level at times especially in the uh, special insight section where I am not that as a translator so we have a wealth of information we've already invested all these years in in english and and understand and then we have this jewel that's going to be in tibetan that we can dissect and bring back into english and then really just start to see the clarification and the cleansing of the teachings and that's how it takes place that's what happened in tibet that's what's going to happen here if we do it right the teachings will be ground down and pulverized and brought back to their purest state and all of the messed up things and our language issues and all of the lexicon debating and all that will be cleared away for a pure Dharma that we all can concur is the correct, correct Dharma, according to the, you know, the schools and, and vehicles that they're supposed to fit into. And once we can arrive at that, then we can say the Dharma is here. I know we say if there's a grouping of Sangha, of monks and nuns or the dharma is the nominal dharma is here or sangha um but we 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 have to really look at when the dharma is here it means that those pure teachings of buddha shakyamuni that are untarnished and and all of our egos have moved out of the way of and then those pure teachings are what make us buddhas and uh i just i'm so glad that we've all been part of that process Rinpoche said to talk about the lam rim so i kind of did um, but what is the Lam Rim? Why did we spend all these years on it? The Buddha taught uh, what we have in, in Tibetan, a uh, hundred texts, um, and then the Indian commentators, such as Nagarjuna, Chandrakirti, all of these famous masters, Aryadeva, that we hear about in the Sangha, um, commented on the Buddha's pronouncements. Now we have 213 texts that uh, make up what are called the authentic Indian commentaries. So we have a total of 313 texts that we use as a frame of reference. And these texts aren't generally put into an order of practice for an individual. There's a lot of information and all of that information when placed into an order of practice will make you a Buddha, unquestionably. But how to get through that information and put it into place is the difficult part. And great masters over the years have shown us a way to do so. And it's a way that allows an individual, wherever he or she is at spiritually, to know how to become a Buddha, how to become a, a, a Hinayana Arhat, how to never see the lower realms again. So these great masters and the one that we focused on was Lama Tsongkhapa, because we, we went over this great treatise on the stage of the path to enlightenment for over 10 years. But when we look at the beginning of it, it says, 
the root text to this text is Atisha's lamp for the path to enlightenment. Um, so we studied this great treatise, but it's because of the kindness, again, of the Indian masters, that it, the Indian masters' works and Shakyamuni's works were put into an order that we can practice. So what is that order? So they were put into three categories, the teachings for beings of three capacities. The first category, Buddha said, would allow an individual to not have to be born in the lower realms again if he or she practiced it. So what were those things that he taught? He stated that if you go for refuge to the three jewels of the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha and engage in ethical behavior that abandons the 10 non-virtuous activities and acknowledge any downfalls, that you would be able to abandon the lower realms, that those activities would be the cause for, not the cause for, would be the reason for the lower realms not existing any longer. So if one could be saturated with that, with those practices, then that saturation would lead him or her to a freedom from those lower realms. But that individual still has to be born again and again and again into cyclic existence. Um, so some individuals weren't satisfied with that level of spiritual result. So the individual that recognizes what some of us can clearly see, that the higher realms aren't even what they're all cracked up to be, when we aspire just to the higher realms, we still have birth, aging, sickness, and death. We at least have the pervasive compounded suffering if we're in the formless realm. So the best we can do is still have pervasive compounded suffering if we don't get rid of what binds us to cyclic existence. And what binds us is, to cyclic existence is the afflictive obstructions. These afflictive obstructions are driven by a grasping at true establishment. And the Buddha said, if you want to get out of cyclic existence altogether and achieve liberation, for yourself alone, an individual nirvana, an abiding nirvana, that you could practice the three highest higher trainings. And those highest higher trainings would allow you to abide in a abiding nirvana. Some practitioners were satisfied with that, but others said, I want to have the result. I want to have the status, if you will. Result's a tricky word when you talk about cessation. I want to have the status of a Buddha. I'm not satisfied with an individual liberation. I want all beings free. I don't only want me free. And if I abide in nirvana, I can't go help them. So I need to get a non-abiding nirvana, A, and I need to figure out what they all need. So I need to be omniscient. And that's what a Buddha is. A Buddha is an enlightened being, a liberated being that doesn't abide in nirvana because his or her compassion and love that he or she practiced on the bodhisattva path won't allow them to stay there. It pushes them out of there to help sentient beings and their object of observation was all sentient beings, so it won't stop pushing them until all sentient beings are Buddhas. So that type of result, that type of realization can only be brought about by practicing all the things mentioned and coupling them with the mind that aspires to enlightenment, bodhicitta. And then with that bodhicitta, you are then a bodhisattva and then you become an engaged bodhisattva by practicing the six perfections, taking the bodhisattva vow, etc. So according to the Buddha, if you do all the things just mentioned, you will become a Buddha. It's inarguable. All beings will do so. There aren't any exceptions whatsoever to that rule. All beings will become a Buddha by doing that. So you can try other things, but they will not lead to that result of Buddha, that status of Buddha unless they are this recipe we're talking about. It's either a cause for abandoning, it's either a cause for cyclic existence or not. It's, and, and it becomes a cause for Buddhahood if bodhicitta is mixed in there with your renunciation. So basically backwardsing it, you have to become, you have to have bodhicitta to become a Buddha. You can't get bodhicitta unless you have renunciation. You can't get renunciation unless you know what cyclic existence is and know what the lower realms downfalls are. And you can't figure any of that out unless you have a teacher. And we, since 1998, have had one of the greatest living beings that has ever taught here with us, teaching us how to become Buddhas. So there is no excuse for us not to become Buddhas because we have the source of all my good is my kind Lama, my Lord. Bless me first to see that taking myself to him is the very root of the path. Bless me first to see that taking myself to him or her is the very root of the path. It's not gender specific. 
It never is. We just wrote it that way. It's usually never gender specific in the writing when you read it. Um, so we have the tools, and now we start at stanza 380, uh, which will show us how to become a Buddha if we listen. Okay, some judges. <laughs> Sanji 
Sancho Çocuğu Dembayi Nana Nyetu Tümün Le Sancin Rebo Kanki Ta Kanki La Sancho Şöba Ne Bidu Dodi Le Ne Kamanse Çeba Çil Kazeba Teşir Keba Najirun Dadu Dani Çetabo Yege Şemo Lunju Tar Teşşeri Yabudu Teşşeri Sanji Dujala Çetan Zöbü Çöşe Çöden Sanji Çöden Adı Dujak Lodan Tamba Çetan Yöre Teşşeri Yabudu Kaşe Da Yoba Kaşe Shira Yabudu. Uh, that's... Okay, we'll go one more. We went a little back anyway. Uh, okay. What is your mother? Okay, that's good. Cool. Five, six, three, ninety-six. Someday I'll learn how to count. I know the five is a four. Okay. So we're gonna begin at stanza three eighty. We we went a little bit back, um, just because we did. Uh, so the great vehicle has a nature of giving ethics, patience, effort, concentration, wisdom, and compassion. Hence, how could there be any bad explanations of it? So here, this section is uh, ra raising a question and debating with and negating this idea that the Mahayana teachings weren't the Buddhist teachings and they don't fall under the category of the teachings to practice. Um, so there are those practitioners who don't accept the second turning of the wheel of Dharma, for instance. Um, Rinpoche, the teme chukor tambo kona? Then the the core sumba the the tambo nipa sumba tambo the denji nipa share nipo sumba the teme yribe. Okay, so I just want to be clear. So the, the Heni Honest, uh, there are some, uh, Rinpoche said there are so many different divisions, um, but Heni Honest do not accept uh, the second or the third turning of the wheel of Dharma. So the first turning of the wheel of Dharma of the Four Noble Truths um, is, is accepted. And, uh, and when I say all, I only use that word because we're using it in a general so if there is some subtle Hinayana school that follows the Heart Sutra, um, I apologize for my ignorance of presentation. Um, but I asked Rinpoche about the three turnings of the wheel of Dharma, and he said expressly that the first turning of the wheel of Dharma is their reliance, and the second and third um, aren't necessarily relied upon or believed are the words of the Buddha. Um, so that is the reason for this conversation that's taking place. How could you despise the Mahayana? How could you say this isn't the word of the Buddha? There are all of these wonderful practices that are concordant with what you taught. There is a Buddha, but there's also stuff that's taught that you don't do. So how could you become a Buddha if there's not extra stuff? So that's basically what Nagarjuna is saying in this text. He's saying that there's stuff that's all concordant. So how can you say that's not the word of the Buddha? And then the stuff that's not concordant shouldn't be because your path doesn't lead to Buddhahood and you know there is a Buddha. You know someone has become a Buddha, and you know what you do only leads to nirvana. So how could there not be extra information than what you have? And the information that we do have is so concordant, how can you argue it's not the Buddha? So basically, that's what this whole point of being is, is arguing at this point. Um, and more to uh, Larampa Geshe. Um, um, so... Uh, others' aims are achieved through giving and ethics. One's own are achieved through patience and effort. Concentration and wisdom are causes of liberation. These epitomize the sense of the great vehicle. The aims of benefiting oneself and others, the meaning of liberation as briefly taught by the Buddha, 
and the hearer's vehicle are contained in the six perfections. Therefore, these scriptures of the great vehicle are the word of Buddha. Those blind with ignorance cannot stand this great vehicle were taught, were Buddhists taught the great path of enlightenment consisting of merit and wisdom. Conquerors have said to have inconceivable good qualities because the causal good qualities of the incon are inconceivable like the sky. Therefore, let this great nature of a Buddha explained in the great vehicle be allowed. Even Buddha's ethics are beyond the scope of Shariputra. So why is the inconceivable great nature, nature of a Buddha not accepted? So here, the point that's being made is, that the Hinayana vehicle only allows one to remove the afflictive obstructions and not the obstructions to omniscience. So the Buddha is actually, um, the, a Buddha state is the only all-knowing state, and there are still obstacles that Hinayana foe destroyers in Nirvana have to that all-knowing nature. So it's saying that even the Buddha's ethics and, and all of the points are beyond the scope of Shariputra. So how couldn't there be extra information that you might not know? Shariputra is the leader of, of, of what you say, and how could it be incorrect? Um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Then if it's beyond what Shariputra even knows, how could you know it to be wrong yourself, basically? How could you know it to be wrong yourself if it's beyond what Shariputra can know? Um, so uh, then it says, the absence of production taught in great vehicle and the extinctions of others, in fact, this are the same emptiness since they indicate the non-existence of errant and existent production and the extinction of inherent existence, therefore let the great vehicle be allowed as the Buddha's word. So the teaching of emptiness is being presented. It's saying, look at the teaching of emptiness that's presented in the great vehicle. It's in negating inherent existence. It's ne negating self. Um, so how can you say that this isn't the word of the Buddha? If emptiness and the great nature of a Buddha are viewed in this way with reason, how could what is taught in the great vehicle and the other be unequal for the wise? So now it gets into teaching to scope. So now it gets into why the Buddha taught so many different things. And it gets into, you don't teach everybody philosophy before you teach the alphabet. It, it says that there are stages that certain, that practitioners need to be taught some need different things than others, and everybody's not on the same path. So it's not like everyone sitting here is in the exact same place, ready, go, start here. There's different scopes that everyone has, therefore Buddha taught different things to different people. Um, so it's, it's saying, knowing this and even seeing divisions in your own Hinayana vehicle, how can you not agree that the Buddha would teach something different than what you think is right? So you see the 18 schools in the new, in the great, uh, Babashika school, the great exposition school. So are only one or 17 wrong? So that's the, the debate that will start to take place. The sutra school, the sutra following scripture, following reason, who's right? Are they all wrong? Did the Buddha not, did the Buddha only teach one thing? And we know that the Buddha didn't. So it's just negating this idea. And the reason that over history, we can see this happening. Look at the, the grammar behind the words, lesser vehicle, hine, small, vehicle. So it begins to make someone who's practicing it feel badly. Think about it. If you were practicing uh, something that was called lesser, and that's what you believed was right, you could see how you would get angry at those calling. You think they're just wrong completely, and they're even not even the word of the Buddha, and they're calling you lesser than them. So you can see why this division started to take place, because um, words are a messy thing. We know that uh, what, what the one thus gone taught with a special intention is not easy to understand. Therefore, since he taught one as well as three vehicles, you should protect yourself through neutrality. You should be, have equanimity. You know, if you, you know, you should just say, be neutral to it. You shouldn't be angry at it. Um, um, grasping at your, your, your tradition and pushing away others' tradition. You should have neutrality. Uh, there is no fault with neutrality, but there is fault with despising it. How could there be virtue? Therefore, those who seek good for themselves should not despise the great vehicle. The Bodhisattva's aspirational deeds and dedications of merit were not described in the hero's vehicle. Therefore, how could one become a Bodhisattva through it? Here's the point. There's extra information. There is a Buddha. Buddhas are caused by Bodhisattvas. Then how could there not be extra information if what you do doesn't lead to a Bodhisattva that leads to a Buddha? Um, so Bodhisattva's aspirational wishes, deeds, and dedications of merit were not described in the hearer's vehicle. Therefore, how could one become a Bodhisattva through it? And the hearer vehicle 
Buddha did not explain the foundation for a Buddha's enlightenment. What greater authority for this subject other than the victor? So who would know how to become a Buddha? The Buddha would. So the Buddha would have information on how to do that. And if it's not in your vehicle, then there must be something else. How could the fruit of Buddhahood be superior if achieved through the path common to hearers, which has the foundations of hearer enlightenment, the meanings of the Four Noble Truths and the harmonies with enlightenment? So sowing the concordance that the foundation of the Mahayana is the Four Noble Truths, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, when I say foundation, one of the foundations, we know that the door into the Mahayana is bodhicitta. Um, okay, so, Triwa uh, Danlenja. Oh, yeah. Uh, what stanza do we um, just hold on? I guess I'm asking Lozong. One second. Shanchu Samba 391. Dandan Poppy. He read that. That's okay. Yeah, I just got to 93 and saw he had read that. So um, uh, thank you so much, Lozana. Um, the subjects concerned with the Bodhisattva deeds were not mentioned in the Hearer's Vehicle Sutras, but were explained in the Great Vehicle. Hence, the wise should accept it as Buddha's word. Just as right, just as a grammarian first has students read a model of the alphabet, uh, so Buddha taught trainees the doctrines that they could hear. Um, so... Okay, so uh, now we'll move on to question and answer. It's a little warm outside today, uh, to say the least. Um, less so. Let us always remember that now, this time in the world, there is so much difficulty with the coronavirus. Um, so, one th we asked, what, what can we do? But one thing that we can do, and Rinpoche has said over and over, is to recite mantras. Uh, to recite the mantra of Medicine Buddha, Teata Om, Bekenze, Bekenze, Maha, Bekenze, Ranzo, Samogati, Soha. Uh, and to recite the mantra of Tara, Om, Tare, Tu, Tare, Tu, Re, Soha. Uh, and if we recite these, we can benefit ourselves uh, and others. And Rinpoche has now um, over and over, um, been so nice and, and wonderful to give us the White Tara initiation. So every month we do it. So anyone who's new to this uh, or new, um, you can receive the White Tara initiation and that will give your mantra recitation uh, that allows you freedom uh, from cyclic existence, fear, uh, and disease to be more powerful. So, Coleman. Yes. Um. So what are the criteria that um, a team needs to have qualified? Because, yeah, so what is it that? It's going to be, t it's going to be the suitable to be shown as human. I'm warning you. Yeah. <laughs> is there an actual definition beyond like suitable to be shown as human that you've seen? Like this before. Yes. So it's something okay so the question is is what uh categorizes someone as a human being the me me gari gari um gari hakodu the kandre hakodu the mayin then dayan da garje the mayin kon mayin the seni the losan la seni irasive the nga hako me the sana kanduna hey but that is you know, the, hmm. can, can you help me with this, the question? Me, oh. it's yeah. Me, human, human being. Oh, he thought I said medicine. Yeah, me. Me, it's any, you're I should not go lower or the me, it's any, I should not go. Marche. Marche. Uh, the talking and hearing, speak and hear. Yeah, but then, yeah. So someone who can speak and understand me. You know, the dayan day omare gangsin the summa. The shudan jorunang hakobudu kon me omare. 
my dog understands how to sit down and they're not a human. I just don't wait and maybe tell them to go. Oh, but if they're a human, they necessarily have these. But if you necessarily have these, it doesn't mean you're human. Okay. Charpa Majon. I see. We got the Charpa Majon. Um, the Ne. So we. Okay, so uh, a, a human who's posited on any among the five aggregates. A human um, po posited on the basis of any among the five aggregates of a human. A, me, a human, yeah, of a human. A being who is imputed on any among the five aggregates of a human. Yeah, that's clean. Thank you. It's funny, I still remember the definition of aggregate from Dudra. That shows you how it works, you know? And that was 20 years ago. Humong <laughs> Apo. Okay, any other questions? And the reason it says when you have the definition of, of, of person, not aggregate, my bad, person, I was thinking in Tibetan. So the definition of person is a being imputed on any among the five aggregates. And the reason it says among the five aggregates, person, does, person can be a human, a dog, uh, person just refers to like being. So when you look at what the definition of person is, it's a being imputed on any among the five aggregates. And the reason it says among is because a formless realm <coughs> being is a person, but only has four aggregates because they don't have form aggregates. So it's a big debate in Dudra, I remember, about why it's among the five. What, why is it among the five, and not just the five? Um, so Rinpoche just added aggregates of a human, a being imputed on <coughs> among the five aggregates of a human. So. Thank you, group effort. And spill and everything. Good thing we're outside. All right, seamless. All right, question and answer, three. Okay, how does one distinction between receiving the fruits of your own negative karma and therefore feeling the blame on yourself without the need to act respond versus people acting out of ignorance and negative emotions and feeling the need to defend yourself how does one react to such a situation? Uh, does that mean, should you defend yourself? Let me reread it. I'm kind of on the fly right now. How does one distinguish between receiving the fruits of your own negative karma? Okay, so everything that happens is your, that's bad is your negative karma. There's no, there's, so anything bad that happened is a result of non-virtue. That's not working for me. Um, and therefore feeling the blame on yourself without the need to act or respond. So versus people acting out of ignorance. So you know that it's your fault that bad things are happening when someone does something bad to you. So what's, is that sounds like a teaching, not a question. I don't, I don't understand. How does one distinguish between receiving the fruits of your own negative karma and therefore feeling the blame on yourself without, you just distinguished it. I don't understand. You've distinguished it in your question, Daniel. How does one distinguish between receiving the fruits of your own negative karma and therefore feeling the blame on yourself without the need to act or respond versus people who act out of ignorance and negative emotions and feel the need to defend yourself? How does one react to such situations? Okay, okay. So how do you act if you are not, if you know the difference? I see. How do you act if you know the difference? Um, how do you act? Okay. The me kashe nampa yen, then le ha kogudu, then nga dungyao yuna, then nga ngame migewa le depo. Yene me kashe nampi chu lobjung she gamare, then de kon ha kogamare, konso tsampa, then me nga nuna, konso yapi omare, nga. The depo yomare, nga le depo yomare. The ne, the nampa, I, I don't know. If you're acting like, I mean, I know the difference and I'm still yell at people. So I don't, I, I don't, 
you have to be pretty spiritually advanced to be able to so how do you act you act as you as advanced as you are i, I don't know it could uh, hmm. uh let me think of a way to say this then nay the make kashe le shina shindu then me gewa le the dunya yondu gewa le the dewa yondu then nay the konso the me gendan kon la nuna kon sanlo dan the a ka nga me gewa le the lesson then nge ngama ngama me gewa le jepo then nay the Made kat sapo lana ngatsu lenja ga garre ngatsu lake le lake garre gangisen nga the me genda nga nuna nga zina the nga le garre leka garre gangisen nga the ngama nge me gewa le jepo yene kon nga nugudu kon nga zingudu kon kat nga kat sapo la lugu okay so um what one can do as a buddhist so I, I my question i asked is that i said there are many people in the world who are buddhists and many people who are not buddhists buddhist people understand the idea of karma and that our negative actions are what cause our unhappiness or suffering and our virtuous actions are what cause our happiness and these are from our previous lives so our previous actions we're not meaning yesterday or the day before meaning this continuum of lives we've had We've, we've engaged in actions and planted seeds that arise into experiences. Our negative seeds produce negative experiences, positive seeds produce positive experiences. Um, others don't know that, so they believe that it's an external source causing them harm, and it's not an internal source causing them harm. So what does the one who knows the difference do? And Rinpoche said one very, very short thing. Meditate on patience. Practice patience. So if you know the difference, your reaction is to practice and, and patience and meditate on patience. Um, so that would be the difference between yourself and the other person. Uh, the other person who might not know that this harm, I asked him, I said, if someone's harming me, saying bad things to me or fighting with me, how should I react? He said, with patience. A non-Buddhist doesn't know that it's not an external harmer. A Buddhist knows it's an internal harmer in knowing that it's our own negative actions that have caused this negative experience and that a negative reaction would be the only thing that could make it come back again 10 times. So as a Buddhist, we are intelligently behaving and, and trying to avoid another yelling person coming at us, fighting us, saying bad things. So the intelligent way to not have that happen ever again is to practice patience. Um, so that's what a Buddhist would do. I'm sorry if I seem, um, when I have to do a question on the fly that's detailed, I wanna make sure that we get to the bottom of the question because it might be a question for someone else or that's gonna change someone's life. So I take them very seriously and I always have beef with the question and answer session at, at some of the big teachings. I'm like, the question's never answered. That's not what they were asking. You know, as a Westerner, you know what the person's getting at in the written questions at some of the big teachings. And uh, so I try to really target out and get to the, to, to the meaning. So if I seem elevated, that's why. How does one find a complete list of the contents of the Kongjur and Tanjur? Uh, does Rinpoche have a list of books his students ought to read? Okay, um, the Kongjur and Tanjur, um, there's, Rinpoche wouldn't know necessarily, he'd say to call the library, um, but on the computer, there is somewhere to get that, correct? Where would that be, Losana? Uh, um, if you Google it, I'm sure, right? Yeah, you can get the Yeah. Asian Classics, I think, did it. Uh, one yeah. Um, We're working on it. So Tibet, yeah, I got it. Actually, an email about it too. I just don't. I can't find it right now. Yes. 
we'll, well, right after the teaching, Daniel, we'll get you uh, the place to go for that. There's a couple of different places on the internet where you can get the list of all of them, and you can actually download all of the texts. Rimache, the Chirang Getru, the Triwa Dan Lenja, the Tarimbo, the Kong Massachusetts Degadu, and Triwa Yure, the Ne, the Becha, the Inji Becha, the Lo, the Chiran Lapcha Garre, the Nampi Becha, Lapcha, the Chiran Lapcha, Garia Yabudu. Yeah, says that it's really up to the individual which Buddhist books they read. Uh, the great treatise on the stage of the path to enlightenment by Lama Tsongkhapa is a wonderful book, but any books on Buddhism that are Buddha's books are good. Yes. And once again, it's about teaching the scope. Um, you always have to say, if he says in a general teaching, what's the best book for you to read? We just learned that the Buddha didn't do that. So who knows? Uh, I need A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's what I know for me. Yes, Scott. Yes. 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 And I know if I kind of say what I think is true, or what the scientific community should be able to do, and what I think is true, then it's really can't rock. Oh, yeah. How do you get to it? That's my first question, though. Like, where, where is this all occurring? Okay, yeah, no, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like... Okay. So, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Okay. You give me a minute with this. Rimache. Um the the tanda the zambaling the natsa chambudu. The rik ni yire. Me kashe nyumba sampa the nyone yomare. The ari sinzi zusum. The jai sinzi zusum. Then the bond on rardu. Then the natsa yomare. Ring natsa yomare. Me kashe sampa. The shera nyumba sampa. Then they consul the the kamba shelo la dro sansan consul ka kagamare gangisine consul sampa nyone yomare then they santen yom mambo santen the mambo dagi dagi mambo yure nyene the rik ni yure ewa ni dandar then they the sansan the shera zingudu gangisine the me kashe ka kagamare then they kama kana ring natsa chembo yongore the ne the 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 natsu de shena me kashe de dase dan do ine dase dan long long dase dan the ne chiran lapcha yurbe gangin sena sansan kon de kinsan de de pinja the the gender sanbo dan do kon pinja sampa chik shena de nyone yo mare the ne konsu gechi she kon pinja long long do ine Kon denba malana zun kora jagare. Then they churn lapcha yurbe gangin sena de sansan, not to gecha kali kapu go. Yene de gecha shena de laken de de not to you long do. Then they not to garre de gariak shu la denba la kaka. Gariakshu Kamala La Dembayena 
Telling the truth is always the best. If telling the truth will cause a fault, don't say anything. That's what he said. <laughs> telling the truth is always the best if telling the truth, meaning like I'm saying like telling someone you should wear a mask. That's where I brought it to. People are, there's two divisions, people who think it's real, people who don't think it's real. I'm trying to keep it very basic. Um, people who don't think it's real, people sometimes who don't think it's real won't even wear a mask. And then the people say wear a mask and they say it's not real and then they start to fight and it's not a debate that's like healthy, it's an angry debate. So he said, saying the truth, the truth is best, but if saying the truth causes a fault, it's better not to say something. Can I what? Someone getting angry the fault? Then they the gender demba lana. Then consu shedo no longer do, do to day. In a chick shena gemma consu pentoldu. Natsu hako gomare. Then a gari gari santen. Daki daki che gari in a chipa yo mare. Yeah, you can't say the blanket. You have to look at each individual situation. He said, you have to see, you know, every situation is not the same. Yene the June garde, Nama the Demba Yakshu, Yene Demba La the La the J the Demba La Jun Yuna Lagamare. Dene the June Garre. Jun Donda Garre. Lona. Yene Sansan the Karma Ju Lon La and then a pentodu. Hm? Nene? Okay. You have to look. I said. He said, I said, give me an example. What's the meaning of a fault? I said, so if there's a fault. He said, well, if the person's going to become very angry. I said, sometimes people become very angry for 10 minutes and then they know it's helpful to them. And he said, that's why you have to look at each situation. Daki daki che. Check it. Check it out. Check it. We got to use our brains. There's no, because we are, that's the whole problem. That's why we're here. Why we're here? Because we're not omniscient. And everything we do, we have no idea what the consequence of it is. Really, we have no idea of anything we're doing besides like virtue causes happiness. Not like, like oh, we helped this guy out a whole bunch. Like you have no idea if you really helped that guy out a whole bunch, you know? And it's, it's because we're not omniscient. We have no idea what another's karma is. We don't know what our karma is. We don't know what we're trying to exhaust to not be born in lower realms. We don't know what they need to exhaust to skip a eon in hell. Like it's so complicated, but all we can do is the best we can and use this format of virtue and helping others in the simplest way we can. The bodhisattvas give their eyes, but start with giving vegetables. <laughs> yes, Losanla. You know, we see grass, we can smell it, we touch fire, we get burned, and that's enough to show oh, that something's conventional, there's no special extra proof. The proof is there. So, if that's so, then there's also a lot of conventional phenomena which are actually like philosophically established in like the lower realm. Right. Like karma is about uh, subtle impermanence or you know, the subtle particles. Since we don't actually see those empirically in our senses, how are they, how, how do we, you know, how do they fulfill this um, thing of, of a conventional sense? I mean, you know, how do we know that they are? I mean, let me ask. I would love that. I would like, yeah, yeah, come on up. Please, please do. Please do. It'd be uh, silly for me to try to ask your question when you've been five years with Geshe's. I, I could do that. I could. I can do philosophy better, but I would rather you do it. Mm. 
Dow so anything that would be under those categories of extremely hidden phenomena um, that are not possible to understand by the, the senses, we, we can't ascertain them. Uh, we have to rely upon inference through belief, uh, inference through faith, sometimes it's called. Um, and that is basically like when we read um, quotes from the Buddha that says, um, through ge um, generosity comes the enjoyments, through ethics, happiness. So this fact would fall under the category of e extremely hidden phenomena. And the way that we arrive at that being in existence is through faith, of inference through faith. And it's actually categorically incontrovertible. Um, and it's a valid cognition that you arrive at through this faith process. Uh, and the analysis takes place of other facts, as it says in the 400 verses, if you have problems understanding um, some of these other extremely hidden things, look at the things that have been presented um, that, aren't, that are, are able to be understood and thought about and establish them and, and then ascertain that those other things presented uh, must be correct. That's not an exact quote, but that's the point Arya Deva makes. Um, so that's the point uh, is that you need this inference through faith. Did I miss anything? I know I added a few things, but thank you. Great question. Great question. So we have to rely on this faith. And that's why the first part of the Lamrim Chemo spends so much time on refuge and the Buddha's uh, excellent qualities and the Dharma's excellent qualities. And then we find in Penchen Sun and Drapa's um, general meaning of perfection that we're going over right now just an intensive survey at the Buddha and what that is and, 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 and how, why he or she is the basis of refuge, basically. Um, and you arrive at a point that you realize that that which has been presented um, is accurate and believable um, if it's presented, isn't in some a teaching found under a rock and it's not concordant with anything else. Um, so yeah, great, awesome question. Shintu Kojo Kali Kapu do Natsu, Ganga Sinna, the Natsu Nampa, Puguchun Chunyo Mare, the Natsu, the Sa, the Lo Chi Kashe, Lo Ju Kashe, Lo Nishu Kashe, Shera Mambo Yo Mare, then Le Ju Dre, the San Lo Dan, Kashe Ken Sabudu, Nyawa, Sane, the J, the what, eight, eight hells, where the Sane J, Tran J, the San Lo Dan, that's Ken Sabudu, then May Kamba Ja, then May Kamba Meja do, then Yanjer Yong do. Then Sanlodan Ken Sabudu, the Yida Sanlodan, then the Mipa Shira Chun Chun, then Go Shira Chambudu, then Ka Shira Chun Chun, and Natsu the Inji Kashi, then Sanlodana Ken Sabudu, then Yone Dan, the Pugu Chun Chun Gicha Dan Drapudu. Then the Yone Yemba, my Yemba, Kali Kapudu Natsu Sansa, then the Lenja Yabudu, the Sanje La, the Yichi Tepaku. Yeah, so you need this inference through faith. And that's so debatable, too, because about the, you know, hmm. so some things aren't ultimately correct. There are stages in a path or an alphabet for someone necessarily. So it's so hard. 
you know, and the Dalai Lama is saying, well, I, you know, we have to go with science if there's not a Mount Meru. Hmm. Well, then what else? You know, that's tough for us. I was saying, it's like, I feel sometimes reading about the eight hot hells and the eight cold hells is what I was saying. I forget everyone's not on the talk. I said, I, when I read this, sometimes I feel like it's like talking to a little child and just telling them something strange about these hell realms where someone runs and their legs burn to the top and then they grow back. And then they live in this place where they're a hungry ghost and they have a knotted throat with a big old head and a tiny mouth and a big belly. And it's just hard for us to then say, that sounds true for sure. Um, but, you know, we also have all this other stuff we're working with within our Western education. So it's, I'm not saying we're so different and it's harder for us. I'm just saying we come to the table with different stuff. And it's a great answer that you just have to believe somehow. And getting to that belief is not through blind faith at all. It's an established faith because it's inferential valid cognition. It's the thing that happens right before you know it by seeing it, touching it, feeling it, tasting it. It's Jepag Sema and then Muslim Sema. So anyway, so let's, uh, are there any more questions? I think that was it. Uh, thank you everybody so much. It's been wonderful as usual. Uh, Rinpoche is doing incredible, just so everybody knows, his doctors are super, super happy. Um, water retention has gone down almost a kilo per visit, and he's down in weight two and a half kilos. Um, and that's, that's seven pounds. So yeah, seven pounds. And that's, that's just an amazing, amazing thing. At 85, uh, he wants to do more now. He's, 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 he reads through his texts and he grabs my books now and reads them. And he is just nonstop full go. He's going to do a retreat. It doesn't matter what, but he's doing a retreat next. And uh, yeah, it's, it's all, all on board right now. We're, we're not looking at, well, how much longer? We're looking at like, we've got a lot of time and a lot of clarity. And all of the definitions are still memorized in the Parshin. All of the quotes Rinpoche put the book down and talked. Remember for like a minute last night doing a quote from scripture. I said, what does this mean? He said, well, it's interpreting this. And then he quoted the perfection of wisdom. One of the bigger ones, like, like, I don't know how long, two para, three paragraphs. He said, it, it means it's just explaining that. Go have, go have some tea. <laughs> so just be ready uh, for more teachings. Not that we weren't before, but I'm just telling you, he's on fire. Not kidding. <laughs> if I had like 10% of this energy, like we're like, he's sleeping before, it's not, it's over. 10% of this energy, I would be like a Buddha so quick, I think. I feel like I'd be like, like there in a heartbeat. Like I used to hear about Lama Zopa Rinpoche not sleeping, and then you'd see him like over like a little bit, and I'm like, he's kind of sleeping. Now I totally get it. They don't sleep. They're just sit, they sit Indian style all night, all day. I, I, it's just like it's real. That meditation is so real. It's like raising the, my hairs right now. It's eh. fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure realm. I dedicate whatever virtues I have collected for the benefit of the teachings of all sentient beings, and in particular for the essential teachings of Venerable Lozandrapa to shine forever. I send forth this jeweled mandala to you, precious guru. I dedicate all this virtue to emulate the knowledge of the hero Manjushri and likewise Samantabhadra as well. With whatever dedication is praised as supreme by all the conquerors who traverse the three times, I also dedicate all my roots of virtue for the sake of auspicious deeds. In the pure land, surrounded by snowy mountains, you are the source of all benefit and happiness, all powerful, Avalokiteshvara, Tenzin Jatso, may you stay until samsara's end. I pray for the long life of the precious Kensar Wandak, upholder of scriptural and realizational doctrines, the spiritual friend who trained extensively in the five great philosophical texts with exceptional wisdom and perseverance. Tuji Rinpoche, Gutsi Shapi Denona. I just need to get that concentration that doesn't sleep because it's like, wow, 2.30 up. All right, what are we doing? <laughs> Thank you, everyone, so much. We appreciate you all. Leave. <laughs>